Hello, I'm Tom Chastain, Milling Product Manager with Work in America. Today we're going to talk about milling, but more importantly about scabbing and what we can do about it. So milling, you know, what is it? It's a controlled removal of asphalt, sometimes concrete, yes, sometimes dirt. We've even milled salt with a milling machine, so you can turn it in somewhat of a Swiss Army knife. Well, why do we use milling machines? Well, it's simple. We have roads that look like this, and we're trying to make them look like this. If you think about it like an artist, the job of a milling crew is to give the paving crew a clean palette to paint a masterpiece on. If we mill it correctly, the paving crew should be able to sit on the joint, null out the screed, give it half a crank, and never look back. But does it really work that way? Most of the time, no. When you talk about milling, we have three magic words on the milling side. Production, production, production. That's all we know. The worst thing you can say to a milling crew on a job site is tell them we have asphalt on our way. Now you just lit the shortest fuse you're ever going to see because you just gave the milling crew a green light. And because we're production oriented, sometimes we go a little too fast. Big question you ought to ask yourself. Are we copying or profiling the road? There's a massive difference between the two. When you copy the road, basically we're running off the side plates or the grade controls. So if there's a bump in the road, there's still going to be a bump in the road once the machine goes past. Now, if you're milling too fast, here's what's happened. Not only do you have a bump in the road, but you've actually elongated that bump. Hydraulics on the machine need time to react. So now we've made that bump that we had worse. So when you're copying the road, you mill it, you pave it, you look behind the paver, you're like, hey, yeah, that looks really good. Until you put the breakdown roller on it, we're exactly back to where we started. Now you look at this animation. Milling machine's running, it's copying, we're running off the grade side plates. As bump in the road, sensors see it, machine reacts, we still have that bump in the road. Good milling crews know how to dial that down to get that a little bit smoother. Now when you're profiling, now we're running an averaging system. Well, basically we're averaging over the length of the machine. So instead of having that one big bump, now you've got three subtle bumps, okay? I use this analogy all the time. It's like having a ball of Play-Doh. You flatten it out, is it gonna be perfectly flat? No, but it's a whole lot smoother than what it was. That's the general setup of what you see on milling machines when it comes to an averaging system. You've got the side plates and you have the sonics on the front and back of the machine. So now we have that same bump in the road. Now we're profiling, we're running our averaging system. The front sonic picks up the bump, then the side plate and the rear. This gives us a much smoother ride. Now, when it comes to scabbing, we have to understand scabbing is part of what we do. How do we get rid of scabbing? Either we've got to cut deeper or run shallow. That's the way we need to do that. Because no paving crew wants to pave over this. I mean, the only people who want this paved over is the milling crew that left that behind. Okay? We're basically, you think about the whole process, the milling machine's making half a piece of Velcro, the paver's making the other half of Velcro. When you have scabbing, we've actually shortened out lifespan. We're going to have premature failures of that new road we just put down. So you look at this animation. All this is based upon you've done drum maintenance. The red's hitting the red, green into green, yellow into yellow. Nothing like rocket science. The reason I show you this, the slower feet per minute you go, the more hits in a shorter distance those teeth are going to make, the smoother or tighter the pattern's going to be, hopefully the smaller the wrap sizing is going to be as well. The faster feet per minute that machine runs, the more of a dragging effect that tooth has in the cut. The more coarse the pattern, the larger the wrap sizing is going to be, plus we're burning more fuel and we've actually cut down the life of the teeth. Things we need to, you know, that influence our milling, our tooth spacing on the drum, milling speed, are we milling at high speed or milling on a low speed? And also with newer machines, the milling drum speed. That's, it goes into a lot of uh, factors as far as what we're doing. Here's what's not to do. There's 240 feet per minute, okay? Bad thing about this video here, around that corner, they hit a buried manhole cover. Not a good day. 
There's 303 feet per minute. Okay, remember, milling, we're production-oriented people. You give us 1,000 horsepower, we don't want to see 1,000 horsepower. We're going to take 1,000 horsepower, we're going to bring it to its knees. Okay? But this also is hurting us greatly when it comes to our quality that we're leaving behind the machine. And sometimes, yes, it is fun to watch a milling machine go fast until somebody breaks that out on your job site. It's a sand patch test. So we check in for the smoothness of our pattern. They've really started putting more emphasis on the milling side as, as they should because for decades we were the ones that came in, made a mess, and left it for the pavement crew to clean up. Communication. we got to have a good line of communication as far as the project goes. Okay, so we need to understand what are we looking for. Are we looking for quantity? Are we looking for quality? Are we looking for both? we got to understand. When we have scabbing on the road, we need to talk to the inspector on the job site and say, hey, look, is it okay if we mill deeper or do we need to raise the machine up? That way we're getting a better quality product for the paver to pave on. Now, when it comes to milling drums, there's a wide array of milling drums, but we'll talk about the big three. A standard space drum, usually 5 eighths or 15 millimeter space drum, is made to mill the machine's maximum cutting depth. So if the machine can cut 14 inches deep, that's the drum you want to use. Then you go to a fine texture drum. That is for thin lift or profiling. Micro drums, same thing, thin lift or profiling. So you're like, why do we have two drums that do the same thing? Because every state is different. Specifications from state to state vary. Now, what you don't want to have is be on a project where you're cutting deeper and you're like, well, we want to mill fast, but we want that pattern quality to be good. We'll put a fine texture drum in it. It doesn't work that way. If you look at the top where the standard space drum, what you have in between those wraps of teeth, it's called space. That's for material flow. That way it's easier for us at a deeper depth to get that material out of the housing onto the conveyor belt. What you don't have with the fine milling or the micro drum is space. So that's why they're limited, because we can't get material out fast enough. Eco cutters, the standard drums, remember, made to mill the machine's maximum cutting depth. Fine and micro, thin lift, profiling. Now you look here, that's a standard space pattern. Looks good. You can tell they've done their drum maintenance, and that's good. That's a fine texture pattern, a lot smoother. And that's a micro drum spacer. Now here's the thing, if we're going to use a fine texture or micro drum, we need to understand a big thing. Obviously, asphalt's the world's most recycled product, and we want to utilize that wrap in a lot of our new mix designs. If you're using a finer micro drum, you're going to lose 10 to 15 percent of that material because now you've turned it into dust. You've hit it with so many teeth, you just grenade it aggregate. So we need to have an understanding of that. So where fine and micro milling can come into play on projects, you look at how some of these have gone. Say we have, you know, lack of grip. Well, the old way of doing it, or in one way, is we could come in, mill the complete surface course off transport that material away, bring in new mix, and pave that back. More economical way though, we can come in with a finer micro drum, take a thin layer off, transport that wrap away from the project, and we're good. Here's another situation. Maybe we've got running. Same thing, we can mill off the complete surface, transport that away, bring in new mix, pave it back. or once again, we can mill off the surface, get us back to where we have grip and its smoothness, transport that milling away. You think about the cost savings related to this. One more. Say so we, you know, it's not true to profile. Once again, same thing. We can mill off the entire, you know, surface course. Same thing. Take it all away, bring in new asphalt, pave it back. Or we could just profile mill it back on its crate. Worst thing about a micro drum though is somebody's got to change all those teeth. That drum you're looking at is around 900 to 1,000 teeth. My recommendation, give it to the new person or whoever showed up late that day. So basically what we need to understand moving forward, when it comes to milling, there's things we need to look at on the project maybe we didn't look at. Okay, if we run into scabbing, communicate. Have a conversation so people are on the same page that way, when we do pave it back, we're not running into any problems where that asphalt's going to fail prematurely. 
Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate your time.